Welcome to CNC Learn and Build. I'm Randy Johnson. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to use the Shark RS1000 Pro CNC router table to cut a variety of joints using the built-in apps. The RS1000 Pro comes with over a dozen joinery apps, and you can find links to all of them in the description below this video. It's also worth pointing out that all of the apps use the same basic nine steps. And I'll cover each of them in detail. But I think you'll find once you become familiar with them that operating the RS1000 Pro is pretty straightforward. In this video, I'll show you how to create a keyhole slot using the keyhole app. Keyholes are often cut using a shop made or store bought jig, and they can also be done in a regular three axis CNC. But I find that routing them on the RS1000 Pro is one of the easiest options, partly because you can adjust the dimensions to whatever size you want, and there's no need for a secondary jig, which makes this one of my favorite apps on the RS1000 Pro. The first step is to install the bit. For this setup, I'm using a one half inch diameter keyhole bit, but other size keyhole bits are easily used as well with this app. With the bit installed, open the settings menu and enter the bit diameter. There are a couple of places in the pendant where you can enter the bit diameter, but I prefer to do it here to avoid errors later. Plus, the bit diameter is needed for the fence calibration, which is coming up shortly. Next, open the apps menu and select the touch plate calibration. And then select bit calibration. The bit needs to be below the table for this step. This one is still a little high, so I'll use the white control button to open the control window, which allows me to lower the bit without going back to the main screen. Next, connect the magnet to the router bit or the collet and press OK to continue. Touch the plate to the bit to verify that you have a good connection, and then press OK again to proceed with the bit calibration. The bit will rise up, touch the bottom of the plate, and then go back down below the table. You can now go to the fence calibration. Click on the white control button to open the control panel. Use the buttons to lift the bit above the table, as well as bring the fence forward. Now use the touch plate to align the flute where to the fence. This ensures that the high point of the cutting edge is closest to the fence, which produces the most accurate result when calibrating the fence. Then position the plate between the bit and the fence and touch the plate to the bit to verify good connection again. Then press OK to start the fence calibration. Now go back to the main menu, back off the fence, lower the bit, and replace the insert ring. This setup requires a stop block to keep the project board from slipping along the fence while routing. I marked the center of my board since I'm only adding one keyhole to the back of this project. I aligned the pencil mark with the center of the fence and then place the stop block up against the left side, since that's the direction the cutting action wants to push the board. With the stop block locked in place, press the apps menu and select the keyhole app. Press the button at the top right to open the app. This opens a list of parameters that must be set up. Start at the bottom with the fence speed. I'm using medium dense wood, so I'm using a medium setting. I use the same medium setting for the lift speed. For this project, I'm setting the start offset at one inch. This is the distance from the edge of the board to the center of the bit. I also use one inch for the slot length on this project. I'm setting the depth to 3 eighths of an inch, which works well for this size keyhole bit.
Check the bit diameter setting to make sure it carried over correctly from what you entered earlier. I'm now ready to run the app. The first time through, it's a good idea to run an air cut to verify that the movement looks correct. The bit moves up first, and then the fence pushes the board forward to cut the slot. And then the fence retracts and then the bit drops down out of the way. Looks good, so now I can proceed to my actual project. I'm using a push block to hold my project down on the table and against the fence and the stop block. It doesn't take a lot of pressure, but you don't want it to lift up or slip sideways during routing. So make sure to keep constant pressure on it as the fence moves forward and again as it retracts. You may have noticed that as soon as I pushed the OK button, the bit started to lift. So it's important to get your push block on the wood quickly. I hope NextWave adds a pause feature to this in the future so it's not such a rush. However, as you can see, the results are perfect. This really is a simple way to make keyhole slots and easily repeatable. For videos and other RS-1000 joinery apps, check out the links in the description below this video.